Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandro Grasse, and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Welcome to a special, extra special edition of the video blog posts. Um, I don't really know what to call this one, but um, this is kind of like a little bit unexpected, but we wanted to put it together for you. Um, because if you follow us on social media, and if you don't, why don't you? But over the last while, um, we've been doing a lot more of the interviews with experts. So that's, I know I call them interviews, but they're kind of like more a relaxed chat with them, um, with, with experts from around the world. So we've been recording them and we are a little bit ahead. So the way that they are published might not actually be the way that you see them then on the YouTube channel. Um, and over the last while, we've been working on one with Matthew Bauer, who is the president of the Acupuncture Now Foundation. So while we were recording that, something came about that um, there was this talk that the uh, the NICE guidelines, the, the draft report that was put in, uh, a decision was probably going to be out in the next few days. So we recorded something um, in relation to that just to give you the full information. So no one better than Matthew Bauer to give you the full insight of exactly what happened since the moment that that draft came out a few months ago and what way the team put together the, the response and he will go into really, really good detail on that. So whenever this misinformation is out now and everybody knows that they've made a they've made a big, big mistake, but at least now you'll know exactly and with facts exactly why that is a big mistake. So let's go over to a split screen and um, get the full insight from Matthew Bauer. Okay, so here we are with Matthew Bauer, president of the Acupuncture Now Foundation. You've been doing amazing work in terms of putting, you know, working with a few people together to uh, about the nice, the nice guidelines here in, in, in this side of the world. So not okay. for Ireland, but actually for the, um, for the UK. But to a certain extent, whatever happens with the NHS in the UK does in a way kind of people here in Ireland do listen to what's going on there. And there's a lot of misinformation about what the last few months when it came about that you know nice weren't going to uh, to move on with with the, the recommendation for acupuncture for uh, for back pain and that was like oh okay so acupuncture doesn't work for back pain is that what this means there was a lot of misinformation I know you're doing work about you know right. with, with a few other organizations about this do you want to talk to to, uh, to yes. us about this as well please yeah thank you well yes we uh, you know we're the the sort of advance word that we've been given is um, that the, um, the 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 nice committee that developed all of the review of the different therapies for low back pain that they are it looks like they are going to stick by their um, draft recommendation to uh, reverse the decision they made in two thousand and nine based on the evidence back then and to no longer recommend acupuncture for the treatment of low back pain. And so we're, the ANF is, um, <clears throat> pardon me, the ANF is working with a group of people to, uh, uh, to, to be ready to respond to this. Yeah. I mean, we actually are working with an international group. We, we had just had a meeting in San Diego a few weeks ago and we talked about starting what we called a rapid response group to t try to, have things ready to respond to negative, you know, publicity or negative stories about acupuncture, uh, and, and and then we got word that it looked like Nice is going to stay by their recommendation to drop acupuncture, and uh, so we've been scrambling to to try to put together, you know, putting together press releases. And the main thing is though that we want to put together a, a lot of resources that individual acupuncturists and acupuncture organizations can use that they can take, you know, talking points and, and questions and answers about what this all means and what's behind this so that people in different groups can, can have, um, you know, pretty authoritative information that was put together through a, a, a group of us. Uh, so they will be able to respond or answer questions about this. And, you know, I'm I'm actually drafting a blog blog post right now that I I hope will be out by the time this airs. Um, and and in my early drafts, I'm saying 
you know, if this wasn't so serious, it would really be kind of comical. Um, <laughs> what, what this committee got wrong is, is almost laughable. Yeah. And that, um, that, of course, the number one thing they did wrong was to make a decision that they were going to put the highest priority on seeing whether the research showed that real acupuncture outperforms sham. Yeah. And as we've already talked about, you know, that there is no standard for sham, there is no standard for real acupuncture, and there's no standard for an acupuncturist. Yeah. Um, so we believe the huge mistake that they made was not reaching out to invite experts in acupuncture research to help them determine what their priorities should be. Because most of the experts in acupuncture research have been on record for a while now saying we should, the, the sham arm of these trials are so inconsistent and they're so fraught with, with, with uh, kind of fatal errors mm. that we should no longer be using these studies. Mm. So we could have warned them that uh, to, to put most of their eggs in that basket would be a big mistake. But they didn't invite um, experts in from the early stages of designing this whole thing. And uh, so they, they did say that they wanted to use sham controls uh, where possible for any kind of therapy that they were reviewing because now this review is not just about acupuncture, it's about many other therapies. and. Um, but what they found was when you look at like manual therapies like exercise or, you know, physiotherapy and, you know, different sorts of things like that, gee, guess what? It's, it's almost impossible to do sham controls of those things. Well, yes, that's true. And the same thing is true for acupuncture, <laughs> but for acupuncture, there's been so many studies that yeah. did sham controls, even though there was no standardization of those controls. There was in most of these other therapies, they recognized it from the beginning and they just don't do many of those sham studies, right? But with acupuncture, there's a, there's a lot of them. Um, so we could have told them that that was a, a, a kind of dead end that they were heading down that was you know, fraught with difficulties. Um, but they, they decided to do that. And here's, here's a few key things that, we, that we're gonna be you know, trying to focus people on. First of all, that, that making the sham uh, versus real, the main thing that they looked at was in itself a, a, a big mistake. But um, the part that's so insane to me is, here you have a therapy that was approved in 2009 under the NHS system, um, and now the people advising the NSH, um, uh, NHS, excuse me, yeah, yeah. they are they are trying. They are saying, "Okay, let's pull this out of this approval system." But what they didn't do was actually look at the people that had went through the NHS system and been treated with acupuncture. Yeah. What they should have done was look at the people that were actually had been treated. And, and say, was it effective? Was it cost effective? Yeah. You know? So, I mean, if you're going to take something out of a system, shouldn't you study how it worked when it was in the system? Yeah. They, they didn't even, as far as I know, that, that issue was never even brought up. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's insane. So, but even when they did study it, what they do say in their report, in their conclusions, was that they did find when compared to usual care, that acupuncture was more effective. Yeah, I remember reading that. For, right. for, for pain, for function, mm. and quality of life, mm. that acupuncture was more effective. Under cost effectiveness, they had a statistic that said that they calculated that the odds that acupuncture was cost effective for low back pain was 97%. Mm. So, uh, two of the studies that are often cited as proof 
that real acupuncture doesn't outperform sham was the GIRAC trials that were done in Germany. Hmm. Um, and, and a study that was somewhat of a follow-up to that trial that was done in the United States. And both of those trials, it's true, both of those trials said the real acupuncture didn't significantly outperform the sham. But both of those trials also found that whether real or sham, the acupuncture was twice as effective for treating low back pain mm. than conventional care. And conventional care, of course, a lot of that deals with drugs. Mm. Conventional care is, has higher harm ratio mm. than acupuncture does. True. So when the German insurance industry who sponsored those trials in Germany to try to figure out whether they should or should not pay for acupuncture for back pain, when they saw that it was twice as effective as the other therapies they were already paying for, mm. even though the real didn't outperform the sham, they, they decided to pay for acupuncture for low back pain. So they reached the exact opposite conclusion that uh, the NICE committee yeah. did, yeah. right, based on the same information. Mm. And if you look at those studies that the, the NICE uh, committee used, uh, most of the, I mean, it's not like those studies didn't show real acupuncture outperforming sham. Several of the studies did. Some mm. of them didn't. Mm. Uh, and then you also, something that we were not able when, when the, Acupuncture Now Foundation, we registered as a stakeholder group um, uh, with NICE and, and with the Northern, uh, and I'm f sorry if I always confuse this, Northern College of Acupuncture, Northern I think College it is. College of Acupuncture, yeah, right, that's, that's right. what I'm doing the master's with, yeah. Well, yeah right, yeah, so, the North, so ANF got together with the Northern, Col of Ac Northern College of Acupuncture, and we submitted, and Mel Hopper Koppelman was the yeah. lead person on this. Uh, she's our ANF vice president. Mm -hmm you know, a, a very, very detailed listing of, of basically everything they got wrong in, the, in, the, in their uh, guideline or in their report on acupuncture for chronic low back or for low back pain. And um, now at that time, we, we did not, we were not aware of there had just been released in the United States what is probably the most comprehensive study ever done comparing over 30 different therapies uh, for treating low back pain. Mm. It was produced by an agency in the U.S. that most people don't know of, which is called the Agency for Healthcare Research Quality, AHRQ. The AHRQ is the closest thing that the U.S. has to the NICE mm. committee. It is, an, it is a... a, a, a uh, it, it's actually a branch of the government whose job it is, is to be the lead agency to study healthcare research and report to the government about it. So they have an ongoing series of, of studies that they publish that's called the Comparative Effectiveness Review. Hmm. And the, I think it's number 169 of these things that they published over the years is on non-invasive treatments for low back pain, part of their comparative effectiveness review. And the comparative effectiveness reviews are made specifically to inform healthcare decision makers, and that means the public, other healthcare providers, and health policy makers. Mm -hmm. And this is the lead agency that's entrusted to get together this information. And so they did this head-to-head uh, -head comparison of over 30 different therapies for treating low back pain. And, acupunct and no, no therapy outperformed acupuncture. Even when, compared, when comparing the real to sham, mm. um, they rated, now, and, and on the ANF, actually, my last blog post, uh, 
I, I report on, on this, uh, uh, this comparative effectiveness review. Uh, so people can go on our website, they can read that, and I go into some detail there, and together with links to um, the original report. And uh, also, we, we took their information. They had uh, charts that showed, mm -hmm. tables that showed uh, how they, they measured two things, and that was pain reduction and, and functional functionality. Okay. And then, then they also measured the strength of evidence for each of these two things. So there was basically four things that were uh, you know, in, in these charts to measure how effective was the treatment for pain reduction, what was the strength of evidence for the pain reduction, how effective was it for, for improving function, how, how, what was the strength of evidence for improving function. Now, they rated them in slightly different ways, but basically it was either you know, no effect or no evidence or small effect or low, you know, and then to moderate. Mm -hmm. Now, um, n none of the therapies and none of the categories, whether it was for pain or function or the strength of evidence for pain or function, none of those reached above moderate. Moderate was as high as anything went, right? And acupuncture versus no acupuncture was the only therapy out of more than 30, and that includes the, the drugs. Acupuncture was the only one that got moderates all across the board, the mm -hmm. highest scores all across the board. Now that was acupuncture versus no acupuncture, mm -hmm. right? But if you look at acupuncture versus sham for pain control, mm -hmm. it's still moderate. Mm -hmm. So, so they, they rated the, the research of acupuncture over, real acupuncture over sham as the highest level of proof okay. that, that any other therapy had. Mm. So, uh, you know, e even, even the drugs um, did not have moderate, 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 moderate. Yeah, yeah. And the, the vast majority of the drugs showed no benefit past placebo. Mm. Um, and uh, a few of them did. But, uh, but acupuncture was the only therapy that got compared to drugs. Mm. And um, they found a small beneficial, you know, small benefit of acupuncture over the drugs. Okay. So uh, when you think about that, the, the, the trials done in Germany, the JRAC trials, and then the trials done in, in the U.S. that followed that, which was done by Dan Chirk and, and Northern California Kaiser Permanente people. Um, when the ANF launched two years ago, we made a little video, an animated video, that we called twice as effective and safer. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and in it, uh, there's a conversation between two people saying, hey, did you hear about acupuncture? Recent study found acupuncture to be twice as effective for low back pain, and it's known to be much safer, right? Mm -hmm. So here you know, we have uh, the U.S. counterpart to NICE who looked at uh, all the recent evidence and came to a different conclusion than they did, mm. including how effective real acupuncture was for pain control over sham, right? Um, and then we have NICE themselves admitting that acupuncture showed that it was more effective than conventional care for pain, function, and quality of life, mm. admitting that it seemed to be 97% uh, likely that it was cost effective. Cost effective as well. Uh, and, and, and even the two of the main studies that, that bring down whether uh, how many studies show acupuncture is better than sham, mm. these, these two main studies, they showed that it was twice as effective. Mm. So you put all that together and, and it's, just, it, it's just incredible that an agency that's entrusted with, you know, helping to benefit the public, mm. that they are on the verge of recommending that they remove this option mm. through their national, uh, you know, uh, health system, mm. that they remove this option that has been there for seven years, that 
is, is pretty much universally, I mean, all the research on acupuncture for low back pain, virtually all of it shows that it's either as effective as conventional care, mm. usually more effective than conventional care, and sometimes twice as effective as conventional care, and it's safer. Mm. So one of the things that we, we want to be really focusing on is saying that that NICE was wrong on the science mm. and wrong on the ethics. Mm -hmm. Because the ethics should be geared around the benefit to harm ratio. Mm. So here we have evidence that, that is really not even debated that acupuncture has a superior benefit to harm ratio mm. over most conventional care uh, for treating low back pain. Mm. And here they are wanting to remove it from that system without even bothering to actually look at what happened to real people that went through that system for the last seven years. Yeah. It, it, it's, to me, it's, it's highly unethical. Mm. And, and it's not just me. Uh, I think anybody would, mm. would find it to be, uh, you know, unethical. Mm. And I, I think, though, that it, it reflects the unfortunate fact that, that acupuncturists in many countries in the West, acupuncture specialists, those of us that have went into this field as a, you know, a, a, a true uh, kind of standalone profession, um, that we just don't have the kind of clout or, you know, we're not taken seriously enough mm. that they would even bother to come to us to say, we're going to look at this. Uh, we could use your help in figuring out how to do this. Mm. So that's why, you know, even though with, with, the, with the film getting to the point, we're going to focus, the, the main theme of the show will be to let the patients carry the story. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be us lecturing to people on camera. Mm -hmm. We're going to be showing it happen in real life situations. But we do plan on, on covering the research. Mm -hmm. We especially want to show mechanisms research where there is plenty of evidence showing that acupuncture does stimulate the body to produce more of its own resources. Yeah. You know? uh, and, and, you know, you can never tell in, in a film as you go through the editing process and everything, because, mm. you know, as you film, things may happen. That's like, wow, that's great. We've got to really put more attention on that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to know exactly. Um, all of the content that will make it into the film. Although I'm actually excited about a lot of the stuff that doesn't make it into the film. <laughs> That's going to give us material for years to come. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, we are going to be looking at this whole research thing. And especially now that NICE is, uh, seems to be doing this, mm. uh, it, it, it might elevate uh, the, the, the importance of it in, in the film. But, you know, we understand the issues where we have people that, you know, we're connected with and we work with, we understand what acupuncture can do clinically. Yeah. Um, we, we see what's happening in many different countries and how amazing it is. Uh, and we also understand about the problems that are, uh, the way acupuncture research is being pretty much turned against us in ways mm. that make no sense. Yeah. yeah. So we want all of those things to come out in in the film as you know our mission for the acupuncture now foundation is to you know build a world where the benefits of acupuncture are known and available to all mm. so part of that is correcting misunderstanding and and that's that's what we hope to accomplish with the film we we think it will do more to further acupuncture and acupuncturist than anything else that we could do especially with as little money in as short a period of time, because we, you know, we're speaking now and in, in no, towards the end of November here, mm. but uh, once we have the funding in place, this movie could be in theaters in less than a year. Mm. So we're not talking about, you know, three, four years down the road. No, we're, we're ready to roll on this once we have the funding. Mm. And, um, 
and, and I believe it will help. You know, the potential here is to knit the acupuncture community together around a project mm. that people can really kind of understand and mm. sink their teeth into. Mm. You know, we're, we have a trailer that's going to, a little promo that, that is going to be coming out very, very mm. soon, probably even before this uh, video is offered okay. to people. Um, but as we're going through filming, we'll be able to show people what we're, what we're producing. Yeah. And, and, and we hope that's going to get people that much more excited that they'll start, that there'll really be enthusiasm that builds around this project that mm -hmm. will help us to join, to knit this network together uh, so we can do these great things. So I so much appreciate you uh, giving me the time to talk about this and I hope people watch it and I hope people, yeah. you know, we, we have a, a crowdfunding site mm -hmm. and it, people can, can get to it from our uh, acupuncturenowfoundation.org. It's, it's prominently up on the uh, front page on every page, just about. Um, so there you have it. Now you know the facts. And this is what this YouTube channel has always been about and it will continue to be about, is to bring the public the best information out there. We will keep on making sure that we get the best and most informed experts to come on and talk to you uh, about different matters that might arise, just like this one. We weren't really planning on doing this this way. The interview with Matthew Bauer is actually going to be divided into different uh, video blog posts. So subscribe and hit the notification button because you'll then get the uh, you'll be the first one to know. We want to make sure that everyone gets the correct information rather than all the misinformation that's going to be out there. Now you know the facts. Um, if you have any questions about this, if there's anything else that you want to send to us, please leave the comments below. Uh, we'll pass it on to Matthew Bauer and the ANF team. As Matthew says, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So we're not going to go anywhere. Uh, you now know the facts. You know exactly what is it that, that we brought to the table. The Acupuncture Now Foundation team did an amazing job and I would like to thank them, the Northern College of Acupuncture as well, the British Acupuncture Council, they put tremendous amount of hours and great work into this and it brought about this amazing wealth of information now that we have that the public can actually get and understand why this has been a big mistake but it's where we are now and we're going to work with it so that's fine, the, um, bring it on I say. Um, massive thank you to everyone that has subscribed to the channel um, as always any questions please send it to just leave them down in the comments below uh, or you can get us on social media as well and any questions in particular Matthew knows that you can contact the ANF directly if you have any questions um, in the UK I'm pretty sure that if you have any questions contact the British Acupuncture Council as well I'll leave all the links below in the description and until next time be kind and be healthy. Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs.